there we go. Holy hell, dude, this game is loud. I also had my headphones turned up like all the way. I'm sure that was part of the problem, but nah, let's not blame me, man. It's totally the game's fault. Okay, I just need to adjust my desk a little bit. I have too many controllers <laughs> for too many systems. Where is my PS2 controller? It's buried under under the Xbox controller, but over top of the PlayStation 1 controller. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> well, this one sounds promising. I, I'm assuming there's some sarcasm in that there because I don't have the highest hopes, man. I mean, it says on the back, real racing, real cars, real tracks. So, I mean... It's gonna be very real. I'll say that much. <laughs> hey, it could be worse though. That's for sure. It's not like I don't think it's gonna be absolute trash, but it doesn't look like super high quality either. Though I would love to be pleasantly surprised. You know, I'd love to be wrong about that. You like the racing ones? I mean, racing games are generally pretty fun, in my opinion. You know, like. At least they're not, yeah, I agree. At least they're not football games. <laughs> Cause, hey, nothing against you if you like football games, but I, they're not for me, man. I am not a football game kind of guy. Uh, ooh, it has steering wheel support. I don't own a PS2 steering wheel, but if I did, damn it, I don't think my, no, I don't think my steering wheel works on ps2 that i have i do have a steering wheel but uh it's for i think ps3 and i'm pretty sure it works over usb so unless like this game has usb controller support which is something you can do on the ps2 um some games have like keyboard mouse support and stuff like that but i don't i don't know i don't know man uh, i guess we'll start a career the amateur for sure <laughs> we're we're total noobs please sir i would like easy mode give it to me easy oh before i forget guys just real quick mention here at the beginning we are still running that fundraiser for the trevor project if anybody has extra money and would like to donate feel free to but please do not feel like you have to mr noodle thank you so much for the five bits love uh, i appreciate you uh, but anyways, yeah, really cool charity. Uh, I don't have a specific goal in mind or anything like that. Just kind of throwing it up there because why not, you know? It raise a tiny bit of awareness for for the Trevor Project. I know you're going to do great things, and I've got a notion we can help each other. Will you drive for me? Or A, B, is that A, B, T? A, B, I? I don't know. You're good, real good, but I want to make you better. What do you say? One car versus two cars. I mean, why would we ever go with the lesser one. I mean, neither of them have any wins or championships or any of that BS. Do we just go with Noble Racing anyways? Because, I don't know, the underdog thing or something? Like, <laughs> like they seem like they're the trash option, guys. Should we try that out? I actually, I am kind of tempted to, I'm not gonna lie. I, I doubt they're actual trash. <laughs> At least I hope they're not actual trash, yes? We're getting a yes. I'm for it, man. Let's go. Oh, uh, one other thing to call out real quickly. Tomorrow, Wednesday, we will be playing and hopefully finishing uh, Canadians fan. What's up, man? Uh, tomorrow, we will be playing and hopefully finish. Wait, did I click the wrong one? Damn it. I can't go back. I'm sorry. I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> playing and hopefully finishing Metal Gear Solid on the PS1. And uh, because of that, we also have a poll currently going for the next game that we're going to be playing. Uh, last time I checked, there were a few games tied. So if anybody hasn't already voted on that, they can. Let me just pull up the poll real quick. I'll go ahead and link it in chat too. But uh, anytime I have a poll going, if you want to join, you can just do exclamation mark poll. I think if I remember correctly, it just has a link to the link tree. Because um, at the bottom of the link tree, you can find the uh the poll link there yeah god of war sly cooper and thievius raccoonus as well as metal gear solid 2 unsurprisingly those are all tied at the top right now um so yeah if anybody wants to vote on that feel free to do so i will be posting a link as soon as i can click the right button 
Um, it should also be set so that you can change your votes if you want to, too. Like, uh, if anybody wanted to change theirs or anything last minute, had a, had a change of heart or something, then you should be able to change it uh, to whatever you want. And you can vote up to five times on this one that we have going right now. Silverstone is an open circuit. Fast sweeping bends are mixed with a few slower corners to provide several overtaking spots. Uh, let's try automatic, because never played the game before. I have no idea what we're getting into. I mean, it's a racing game. It can't be that complicated to figure out. Single championship career and time trials. I'm just looking at the back of the box. Up to 18 vehicles in each race. Groundbreaking artificial intelligence. Opposing drivers remember your actions from race to re race and actually react to you. If that's true, that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. I'm not going to lie. Has lifelike crashes, pileups, and spinouts. Benefits from relevant strategic and tactile advice from your race engineer. Okay, I mean, they, they're saying some neat things. Maybe it'll be okay. I feel like we should probably do a practice lap just because I said never played the game before. I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so we <laughs> definitely can't just go full throttle around the bend. Is this red thing a racing line? Yeah, I think that's the racing line. It does use analog controls. So here, I'm going to just gently press the X button. I'm pressing the X button right now, but we're losing revs. I'll press it a little bit harder. Now we're gaining revs slowly. Now I'm mashing it down and it's going fast. So this <laughs> this is a game that's going to hurt your thumb cuz <laughs> you just got to you just got to press it down and press it down hard, damn it. Uh, so that's look behind us. Is that did I make that turning indicator pop up or did it just do that automatically? I, I think it just did that automatically. L2, R2 don't seem to do anything. I'm assuming that's probably how you would shift. Okay, that changes our view. Squares, break, probably also reverse. Triangles, nothing. Selects, nothing. Start, start. Okay. Can we use the... Oh, you can also use the right stick for throttle if you wanted to. For throttle and reverse. So that's probably a little bit easier on the thumb, at the very least. <laughs> I've never really like played a racing game using the the right joystick before. I've seen the option in a couple of different games, but I've never actually used it before. I guess I'll probably try it here. I'm already missing Gran Turismo 7 though, because in Gran Turismo 7 you have those nice uh, the nice triggers on the PS5 controller to really make it easy to like you know half throttle, quarter throttle, full throttle, whatever it is that you want to do. I do miss that already. This track does have some gnarly turns, man. I can <laughs> I see this not ending so well for me. I am not good at racing games. Oh god. There is not much traction on the track. Hear that or a car is just junk. I mean I suppose that's that's a possibility too. I do appreciate the little heads up thing telling us, you know, gentle turn. Uh, I'm assuming this means medium turn. But what speed can we take a medium turn at? 50? 50 to 60, maybe? Okay, so hard turn. So break on the straight. Can we use the D-pad to steer? We can. I don't know why, but in a lot of, like, PS2 racing games, I feel like the 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 D-pad is a little bit easier to use than the, the joystick. I'm sure I'm just, like wrong <laughs> on that but i don't know something feels good about the d stick to me man i like that d stick if you know what i mean <laughs> that's, that's all i'm saying guys oh man okay so we really do got to take it slow around those turns i'm gonna go ahead and exit the session do the actual race and uh we can use like the other cars maybe to get a feel for how fast we should be going around uh never mind i guess we need to do a qualifying lap first I didn't see that in the options before we picked uh, practice. Oh, and we don't get a, uh, a driving line in the actual match. So that's just like a practice mode thing. Honestly, fair. I usually leave that in in Gran Turismo because I appreciate it. <laughs> but I understand why that wouldn't be in the game, you know, like for the actual racing part. It does give you a bit of an advantage. Although I would argue that the computer drivers have an even higher advantage seeing as how they're an AI <laughs> not a real person I would say that gives them a little bit of an unfair advantage 
question. Can I just get off-road tires and then do my entire race with that? Because that, uh, that seems like a pretty good idea to me. Dragon Age Origins, Elf or Dwarf? I'm partial to dwarves most of the time. I don't know if it's just because I'm a, I'm a stout, hairy, bearded man or, <laughs> or what, but I'm partial to dwarves. I like me a good dwarf, man. That would be cheating? No. We would never cheat around here. Nate says elf. I love how it boasts about these realicious, realistic uh, crash physics on the back of the box. And then every time we hit the wall, we just kind of bounce off of it. Like, no dents to the car, no, no damage to the wheels or to the way the car handles or anything like that. Just a nice little bounce off the wall. I mean, that's exactly how crashes work in real life, right? Are we even... I guess we are losing speed in the grass. We just uh, don't seem to make up speed as quickly, like accelerate as quickly when we're in the grass. We don't really lose speed, though, so you could probably use that to cut a lot of corners. I mean, that would be frowned upon in real racing, of course, but I doubt this game makes any sort of distinction. I'm almost positive we're going to qualify for last place. That's my that's my official guess here. I think when you're in the grass, they just cut all acceleration. Great. I think that's the way they Good handled time. the... <laughs> handled the, hey, guys, don't go off-road or bad things will happen. That's how they did it. Third? That got us third? That's... Oh, no. I don't have much hope for these other drivers now, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Third in GT. Pro and GTS, whatever the hell that is, we didn't qualify at all for. But I mean, that makes sense. Starting grid? What's the difference between starting grid and race? Oh, we actually get a CR star starting grid. Got it. Noodle, we need you as a tiebreaker, love. Or anyone else in chat. First person to say a race. Elf or dwarf. That's who, that's who they're going to play. You gotta pick quick. Get it out there before someone snipes it. How am I in second place when there's three cars, it looks like? Four cars, at least, in front of me. Something seems fishy here, guys. I don't know. Yeah, look at the, look at the map down there. There's a shit ton of cars in front of us. Are elves the pretty... You've seen Game... Or not Game of Thrones. I mean, you have seen Game of Thrones. But you've seen Lord of the Rings how many times and you can't tell the difference between an elf and a dwarf? Like... <laughs> Love. Come on, man. How am I in first place, man? If you look at the little mini-map, there's like... I'm assuming like 15 cars in front of me. Maybe those are like... Maybe we're doing all of the, the series at one time. Like the pro, the amateur... Um, all the different classes, maybe they're all racing on the track at, at one time. And so those are like the, the better guys up in front of us. That's what I got to assume. I don't know. You don't know what the elves look like in this game. I mean, that's fair, but they look a little elvish. Just, <laughs> just, you know, just a little bit. And the dwarves, you'll never guess. The dwarves look a little dwarvish. Just a little bit, though. Not not too dwarvish, but... <laughs> they look a little bit like dwarves. There was a pretty dwarf. Oh, God. We went way off track. That's what I get for looking at chat. Well, there goes all of our places. <laughs> oh, God. It's fine. That was a, a calculated move, man. Pretty and ethereal elf, I guess. Or you guess so. Oh. Which one was the pretty dwarf in Lord of the Rings? I don't think you're talking about Gimli. Are you talking about, uh... Oh man, I can't remember. Oh, Thor, Thor and Oaken shield? Is that the one you thought was the, the pretty dwarf? The main dwarf from The Hobbit? But you get extra points if you have the fastest lap. Uh, lap. 
I guess it was the hopping move. Yeah, is that the one you're talking about then? Thor and Oaken Shield? That's the only one I can think of that you might consider to be quote unquote pretty. Oh god, don't go off track again. Keep it on. One of the brothers? Thorns, okay? There was a lot of brothers. <laughs> I don't know which one you're talking about, to be honest. I have no clue. Okay, I think this is where... Yeah, this is where we went way off last time. And we're doing it again. Not nearly as bad, though. Oh, uh, we lost a point. Wow, dude. I don't think that's a very realistic AI decision there to just ram into my ass like that, bro. That makes you the leader. Damn right it does. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Gun it. Go quick. It's alright, we're fine. We still have like a quarter of a lap left. Get back in front of this, bro. The way he's like constantly wiggling around too. I think I think the AI maybe honestly is having a little bit of trouble with what to do. Bro! <laughs> this guy's a dick! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the name of the maneuver, but he totally just did the thing where you take the front wheel, put it on their back wheel to try to make them spin out. Like, this dude's gunning it for us, man. He does not like me. Did I ram into the side of him at some point or something? Or is he just mad because I'm kicking his ass? He's probably just mad because I'm kicking his ass. He's just a bitch. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I look. I know we picked You're amateur, lap, lap. but, oh wait, we have a whole nother lap? I thought that was the last lap. My bad. Anyways, I was gonna say, I'm pretty happy with our performance so far though. I say as I go completely off-road and these dudes ram right the fuck into me again. <laughs> okay. Excuse me, excuse me, don't mind me trying to make a little bit of room. I gotta, I, I, excuse me, sir. I'm trying to get around you here. Do you mind? Look, with the way they were ramming into me, I don't feel bad at all that just fucking <laughs> hitting them. Healy? I don't, I don't remember which one's which specifically. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you the truth here. Keely and Feely, though, those were the two brothers, right? I think so. This is one of the rare instances where I think I remember names better than I do their actual faces. I almost think it's better to just ram into that wall so that it bounces us farther back closer to the track. <laughs> whenever whenever I fuck up uh, slowing down before the, before the turn there. Got a little bit of an S Ben. Bro, we got this. We got this. They were the younger ones? Well, I mean, I figured that. I didn't think you were going for a grandpa dwarf. Just doesn't sound like your type. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, man. Again, I'm not here to I'm not here to shame anyone if you're into those those grandpa dwarves, dude. More power to you. Nope. Don't go off track. We're so close to the end. Don't fuck it up now. What happens if I go into the pit? I wonder, is pitting even a thing in this game? I mean, they have the pit there, so I have to assume that it does something, but... You're the winner. Oh, Keely's the one that fell in love with the, the lady elf. Okay. I don't remember her name. I'm pretty sure she wasn't actually in the, the Hobbit books. That was like a... a new character just for the movies if i remember correctly but as i've proven so far tonight my memory's trash man so there's <laughs> there's a decent chance i'm wrong you set the standard at the top now keep it there don't tell me what to do what if i want to finish in last place <laughs> see i like how in uh like gran turismo games like that you can pick different races to do at like different locations at any time you know 
I kind of like that sort of thing. I also really, I, I just really like <laughs> Gran Turismo and, and I would probably like Forza too if I ever actually gave it a try. But I like, you know, collecting cars, raising money, um, working on my cars and improving them, doing just random races, testing them out and things like that. Like, that's the kind of racing stuff I like. These, the, this kind of racing game isn't bad if you're really into the racing aspect of racing games. Although, so far, I'm not completely sold on all of the claims that it made on the back of the box. What year was it released, I wonder? Trying to find, like, a copyright or anything on the back, but I'm not... 2000 to 2002. So it's probably released around 2002, I have to assume. Since that's when the copyright ended for it. Uh, excuse me, where's my pop-up telling me about the turn here? Game? Elf Mage or Elf Rogue? Oh, uh, see, that's a hard one, dude, because I really like both those uh, classes. Um, if I remember correctly, when I played Dragon Age, the first one, I think I did Mage... So for that one reason and one reason only, I want to say Rogue, just because it's what I haven't played. Mage Witch like, uh, they're magic users, yeah. They're not witches, but but they do use magic. And then Rogue are like your assassin, dagger, stab people in the back kind of character. But we really got to get you into some fantasy games. I keep trying to get Noodle to join D and D, but. <laughs> <laughs> but Noodle refuses <laughs> to give D&D a try, man. Not into the idea at all. Oh, God. We got a rogue and a mage. Nate. Nathaniel. Elf Rogue has an interesting start. There you go. So if you weight all of our votes evenly, it looks like Rogue is winning. <laughs> if you don't, though, then... Wait, what? What did I miss? Oh, is that a pole? I can't really do a pole in the middle of the <laughs> the race. Check the request. I see it now. I do see it now. Look, whenever I stream, I've brought it up before, but whenever I stream, I look at the chat that actually pops up on stream because um, that's right next to my face compared to like the, the chat in Twitch or the chat in OBS because that I actually have to turn my head to see. That's why it's so hard for me to see the requests, but I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll. For now, kick the race's butt. Let's go. <laughs> Gonna murder this race, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> right off track. Let's go, dude. It gave us a green turn, so I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. I think I just need to pay more attention to the mini-map than I do the little heads-up thing it gives us. Because that heads-up thing is full of shit. <laughs> that was not a green turn. That was a very tight turn. Never mind. A little more practice and you'll soon be up there you with the said you were going the wrong way. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, poll time. Uh, manage poll new poll i think streamlabs has a poll option too that you uh you mods can do at any time but i'm not 100 percent sure how it works what should rue play in dragon age origins we got elf mage elf Rogue. Duration. Two minutes. You got it, Nate? You got it, Noodle? You got two minutes. Vote in the poll. I can't vote in the old, my own poll, so... <laughs> you know what my vote is. I already said it. Elf Rogue. One vote for Elf Rogue. Uh, we already know our starting positions. Let's go... I need to see what the actual commands are for it, but and make sure that I don't have it disabled as well. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a thing that you guys can do with the with the Streamlabs bot. 
I mean, I could do it as well, but <laughs> in situations like that where I'm, I'm in the middle of a, a race or a game or something like that, you could, you could start the poll for yourself. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any penalty for cutting corners, which, I mean, I'm fine with, but seems just a little unrealistic, you know? Do you get bonus points if you, like, beat people from the other racing classes? Oh, God. No. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Bro. I think he actually helped me making me spin out there. <laughs> oh, man. He sent me drifting in just the right way. That it made that turn actually pretty decent. Nate Noodle, I don't know if you guys have voted in the poll. I can't check, but you only got like 30 seconds left to vote in the poll for Rue. Let me over, you dick. <laughs> Realistic racing AI my ass. These guys are trash and I hate them all. You voted? Geez, you better have voted. Vote twice. Oh god. I almost wonder... So the sand does seem to actually slow us down. But I almost wonder if that turn there specifically, if we can just like Mario Kart it and just go full speed ahead. Just fucking go for it, dude, you know? Like, jump over that sand pit and... Rogue wins? Hell yeah, dude. Elf Rogue all the way. Is that, I mean, from... I never finished the game, but from what I remember of Dragon Age Origins, I was really having fun with my Elf Mage playthrough. Or did I do a Human Mage? I don't remember. Anyways... I was having a lot of fun with the uh, with the mage class, but I uh, I've been playing D and D lately, and I'm finding myself in D and D at least being more partial to um, melee classes than to the magic classes. But I think that's more of like a D and D problem than than a. Uh, like an overall problem because I, I do like playing mage and well I was gonna say in Skyrim but I only enjoy playing mage to a degree just because a mage in Skyrim is so fucking hard whenever you can just be a stealth archer and destroy everything all the time it makes it really hard to be like you know what I'm gonna do magic nothing but magic and then it's like this is taking 20 minutes to kill this one basic enemy I could just crouch here, shoot him in the head once, and he'd be dead. <laughs> makes makes it real rough. Speaking of, though, um, Skyrim and PC games in general, you guys know what I got today? Guess. Guess what I got today. I'll give you a hint. I'm in love with it. I'll give you another hint. We were just talking about PC games, so it's probably related in that to some way. <laughs> and I've mentioned it on stream before. A new game? Uh, close, but no, no new games today. Game related, obviously. Skyrim Anniversary on PC. I've actually had that for a little while, and I'm super excited to play more of it. Which I should be able to start playing more of it here soon. But with that said, I also have 18 games, I think, on my currently trying to play through list on Steam, because I categorize all my games on Steam by like what I'm doing, a game you ordered. Man, you're missing it, man. Noodle could guess, but uh, that'd be cheating because <laughs> Noodle knows what I got. I got my Steam Deck, man. My Steam Deck came in the mail today. It's so cool. I haven't had the chance to, like, play hardcore with it yet because I was working all day. Um, but I have gotten to mess around with it a little bit. I While I was at work, I got three games downloaded. And I've played on it, like actually played games for probably about an hour and a half so far. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I, I can't lie. Um, it works really well. It's really smooth. The UI is probably like, I feel like it could use a little bit more work. It looks really nice, but it's not the most reactive thing in the world. Um, like there are times when 
you know, I go to switch from my all of the games that I own to, say, the games that are verified to play well on Steam Deck. And it's just like, instead of it being a smooth animation going from one page to the next, it kind of chugs for a second and then just pops open the other menu or whatever. So like, I feel like they could do a little bit of optimization, a little bit of work on that there. But part of that was probably also due to, uh, one, I have way too many games on Steam. If you have a more reasonable library than I do, that would probably be a less of a problem. And two, the internet uh, work sucks major balls. So there's also that too, which I mean, probably didn't help anything because it has to, you know, load the, the cover art and all that BS. I wonder if it does any caching, like downloading of all of the, the cover art so that it's there and ready for you. It must, because when you're offline, I'm pretty sure it still shows cover art and whatnot. Hmm, I don't know. Anyways, you yeah, know, it's, it's very cool. The, the games that I've gotten a chance to try so far, I played a tiny bit of Cuphead on it which ran flawlessly. I even uh, underclocked the system a little bit for that game to save on some battery life. Um, just, or no, Destroy All Humans, which works also really well. I have all the settings on high and uh, I'm running it at 30 FPS. If I turned the settings down a little bit and unlock the frame rate, I could probably run it at 60, but battery life. So <laughs> I'm running it at 30 and it works really well. And then uh, Elden Ring. I tried out Elden Ring 2, and it runs, again, very well. Uh, about 30 FPS, but for a handheld gaming device, 30 FPS isn't all that bad, man. Like, I'm pretty happy with that. Once I got home, I tried a couple other games, but they were games that specifically said, like, hey, this game does not work on Steam Deck. And I was like, oh, I'll try it out anyways, you know? Surprise, surprise, they didn't, they didn't work. With some fiddling, you might be able to get them to work, but it, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta put in the time. That, or you do have the option of installing Windows on the Steam Deck and doing that, so you can just, you know, run Windows, so every game that Windows supports, the Steam Deck supports. But on Windows, you have a little bit more overhead from the OS than the, the custom Linux distribution that Valve put together. Um, and from what I've read, this may have been fixed over the past few months, but from what I read shortly after it came out, the drivers weren't quite as optimized on on Windows as they were on Linux. So some things just didn't run quite as well as they should. Um, some of the buttons on the Steam Deck didn't maybe do what you wanted them to do or would have expected them to do or whatever. But yeah, uh, so far, two hours into messing with it, I would say that it's well worth the, the base price of like $400. So, I mean, it's, you know, $50 more than this Switch OLED, but it's much, much more powerful than the Switch OLED. I haven't tried it myself, but I have seen videos online of people playing Switch games on their Steam Deck and it running very well. Sometimes better than the Switch runs games. For instance, uh, Breath of the Wild on Steam Deck seems to get a solid 30 FPS from what I saw, whereas on the Switch, it runs okay, but 30 is kind of like the maximum, and then it drops down to 20 quite often, stuff like that, so pretty cool. It's pretty cool, but like I said, I haven't, I haven't messed around with that at all. I've joked about completely replacing my Switch with the Steam Deck, but I don't know if I'm <laughs> ever gonna actually do that. Because, I mean, presumably, I've never even touched the Switch emulator, but I'm assuming that uh, you wouldn't be able to do like the online stuff, like say trading Pokemon or, or the Switch Online games, like the Nintendo stuff and Super Nintendo stuff. I'm assuming all of that wouldn't work. Animal Crossing, man, like Animal Crossing visiting other people's islands and shit. I can only assume that stuff would not work too well. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Like I said, never messed around with it. But yeah, really cool device. It is a little bit big. It is a little bit heavy. Um, but what do you expect? It's a whole gaming PC in the palm of your hand. If we could stay on the track, man, we would be a force to reckon with. We've gotten first place so far, but honestly, I feel like that's just because we're in the amateur circuit. 
we were in whatever the medium one is right now, we would probably be screwed. This car really does not like turns. I thought with the banking and the fact that we were going uphill that we would have been able to stick to the road a lot better there, but I think I'm just a little too used to Gran Turismo. It's like Gran Turismo 7 made a big point about like when you're going downhill, you, you're more likely to lose control when you're going uphill. Um, is it actually harder to make turns going uphill? I don't remember. It's been a little while since I've played GT. Seven. Good effort. Keep improving your driving skills and you'll soon be a winner. Playing this game just makes me want to play Gran Turismo 7 now. <laughs> Good, we qualified for sixth place. I like it. Let's go. <laughs> oh man. I have been making it a point though, speaking of ordering games, buying games and stuff like that. I've made it a point to try and beat some of the games that I own and have been slowly kind of playing for such a long time. I beat Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories, finally, even though I've had that game basically since it's come out. Um, I finally got around to beating it. I beat Pokemon while Noodle and I were on our little vacation together. I have started playing Destroy All Humans, um, which I guess is another game added on that I didn't really need to. but. And then on my Switch, I've decided to beat one of the Zelda games, but I haven't decided which one for sure is going to be the next one. And then for PC, it's probably going to be Destroy All Humans is the next one I'm going to try to finish, because that one's not super long. But I don't know what game I want to try and beat after that. I have on my list of games I'm currently playing through, I have Elden Ring, Skyrim Anniversary Edition, um... Uh, da, 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 Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition Divine Divinity which is the, the second Divinity the game that they made those two games I don't think work on Steam Deck though uh, Cuphead is on my list I'm sure there's oh I know there's more because there's 18 total but I can't think of what they are at the top oh Castlevania Anniversary Collection that's another one on there that uh oh boy <laughs> I'm, I don't know, I feel a little bit iffy about Castlevania Anniversary Edition, specifically because uh, John and I, for the Just One More Level podcast, we played some Castlevania 2, and that game is rough, man. <laughs> I really enjoyed the first Castlevania game, besides all of the instant death pit enemy layout level design bullshit in that game, it really pissed me off, but other than that, I really did enjoy Castlevania 1. But Castlevania 2, the things that they try to do with it just kind of fell flat for me personally, you know? I just don't enjoy them as much as uh, maybe they had hoped someone would. This guy's actually giving us a run for our money this time. Oh god, I keep thinking Circle will like handbrake us or something. Circle does not handbrake. Circle fucking changes our our view. Let's go. Hammer that throttle, man. Go, go, go. We're staying on the track now, but we're not catching up. I feel like I need to play a little more recklessly maybe did he just say the car in front is one of my rivals we have rivals in this game i like that there we go dude get fucked you gotta learn to cut them corners bro there's no penalty for it you can just go wild man Cor corners don't even exist in this game you just go for it honestly just drive in a straight line <laughs> right into the wall. If you, I hear if you run into the wall 16 times and then turn the game off and turn it back on, you'll just glitch through the wall and win every race instantly. It's true. My brother works at Nintendo. Or my, my dad's brother. <laughs> my uncle. Yeah, that person. <laughs> Stop hitting my ass, dude. I know we're rivals and all, but I don't know you like that, okay? You're on your last lap. lap.
final lap. Don't fuck it up now. Smooth corners. We got this. See, the fact that there's no sense of progression quickly in this game, at least, I'm sure there's progression later on, because didn't we see something about being able to update your cars or, or do something with them? But the fact that there's no progression early in the game is making me already kind of get tired with it. I guess that's one benefit of like being a kid and having next to no games to play. Like if I was given this game or, or bought this game or something like that, I would pretty much just have to play it because it's either this or replay one of my other games for the 10 millionth time, you know? So that would give me a chance to, to get a little bit deeper and find out if it gets better. But as it is right now, it's just racing with the same cars against against the same cars on five different courses and i'm not even a big fan of the car i have <laughs> so it's like i'm a little iffy about it man would have been nice if we had some choice in the the cars the tracks anything the only choice we got to make was who sponsored us in the beginning or what or no what what team we joined i guess not not a sponsorship hashtag not spawns And then you say green. Now, when it flashes like that, the, the, the turning sign up top, I wonder if that means, hey, dumbass, you're going too fast, or if that just means, okay, you're getting really close now. You finished in first place. I'm not sure. First place again? Hell yeah, we did, dude. We are racing gods. Did we get the fastest lap? 152.59, we did. So apparently that's an extra point for the whatever we're in right now. Speaking of, how many more races do we have in this tournament? The gauntlet? Uh event? I don't know. I don't know what we're what we're doing exactly. Got to keep tabs on Chung now. He's a rival, but make sure it doesn't affect your driving. You could win the championship. It will give this team the adrenaline boost it deserves. Round four of five. We still have two more. Bruh. <laughs> I don't want to do more, Mr. Krabs. Hold on. We're going to go to save career. Because I want to go to, to exit. And I want to see what else there is in the game. Like, Can we pick some cars and just do some racing or something? Actual cars from the top worldwide manufacturers, authentic tracks, weather effects, day and night racing. We haven't seen any of that yet. It doesn't say how many cars there are anywhere. It might in the manual, but I'm not going to crack the manual open right now. Okay, so you have resume game or resume career and then just start game. Oh, okay, this takes us in here. So you have challenges, single races, time trials, and career. What kind of challenges do we have? Can you run rings around the other Audi cars in the race? Oh, you actually have to unlock the challenges too? I like when games have things to unlock. Don't get me wrong. Because it's kind of nice, you know, to... You get that nice feeling whenever you, you do something in a game and the game gives you something in return. Uh, it's the one thing I miss from the Switch version of Mario Kart 8, because uh, basically everything's just unlocked from the beginning. It would be cool to actually unlock, you know, new racers and tracks or whatever. Um, round one of three? Just a normal race has three rounds? <laughs> Why can't we just do a race, man? Or a, a challenge. I guess we're doing a challenge, not just a race, but... Oh my god, and this is the same freaking car that we get in the normal mode. This isn't even anything different. We're just doing the same thing no, again. <laughs> Bruh. Broski. Excuse me. Oh, but they're all... <laughs> I think I might have made that guy angry. Uh, but now they're all the same car as us instead of being... I don't know if in the, the career mode the other cars were actually different than us or if they just had a different paint job, but... I'm sorry, devs of this game, but I'm not sure you've ever driven a car before because this is not 
exactly feel like realistic physics with crashes and pileups and the most advanced AI. Yeah, no, this feels like none of that. This feels like a, a bog standard racing game from, well, the early 2000s. It does seem like it might be a little bit darker this time, so maybe maybe we're experiencing some of the, the weather effects in action, you know? It's a, it's, it seems a little overcast. Maybe, maybe a bit of rain will start trickling down? Probably not, but a man can hope. I don't know why saying that made me think of it, but has anybody watched House of Dragons yet? I don't know if you guys even plan on it, Nate or, or Rue. I know Noodle has, because surprise, me and her watched it together. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, though. I know some people are all like, no, I'm mad at Game of Thrones. I'm not going to watch it. But I'm enjoying House of Dragons so far. I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything in case people plan on watching it. But it's pretty good, man. House of Dragons, continue. It's the Game of Thrones prequel. Because Game of Thrones wrapped up. HBO couldn't just let all that money, you know, disappear though, so they made more. <laughs> and we got we got House of Dragons. He said, I, I personally think it's pretty good so far. It, it focuses around the god Rhaenyra, is that her name? It's a one of the Targaryens, whenever they still held the back in the day when they held the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones. It's focused around that, at least here in the first season. I don't know if things will change as, as time continues. So far, unlike Game of Thrones, where it was constantly switching between characters' point of view, it seems to almost exclusively be based on what's going on with Rhaenyra. Like, it does switch a little bit to, like, her one of her uncles every once in a while it'll switch to. And then, uh, like, her dad, which is the king. It'll switch to him every once in a while too, but the the moments with them don't feel all that large. Whereas so far the the scenes with Rhaenyra seem like you know the main points. Whereas in the original Game of Thrones, you know the stuff with Jon Snow or Arya or Tyrion or whoever they were following at any given point, like everything felt really important. Like oh my God, look at this! Wow. Whereas so far in House of Dragons, it just seems to kind of be Rhaenyra's story. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, just a little bit different from what I've expected. With all that said, though, there's only two episodes out so far. So things could change massively as time continues. If you liked Game of Thrones, though, I would suggest, like I said, giving it a try. Honestly, and from what I've seen so far, um, you would probably be able to enjoy it just fine even if you never have watched game of thrones because they don't really like it, it's a prequel so everything that happened or happens Great took driving. place before game of thrones was ever a thing so like other than you know them naming some houses and and maybe you knowing a little bit more lore of the world in general if you watch game of thrones other than that like it doesn't really it doesn't really seem to matter. You can you could enjoy House of Dragons without Game of Thrones, I think. I do wonder like as time goes on though, if that's gonna be get to be a little bit more ish, you know, like just get more of that. Cause like they have said some of the, the big house names. They mentioned, you know, the, the prophecies of the North and all that BS. Um, which of course they talk about that sort of stuff a lot in Game of Thrones proper. So it was kind of neat seeing that stuff in there, but it wasn't very important to the plot either. Which almost makes me wonder if they're trying to set this up as a series for just people in general, not just Game of Thrones fans, which is kind of smart, you know, as long as you're still able to hold on to the core Game of Thrones fan base opening it up to be more accessible to the general populace isn't a bad idea it's one of the problems with game of thrones whenever it started to he hit its peak of popularity you know around season five six seven whatever um there was so much lore at that point that if you weren't dedicated enough to sit down and watch from episode one i feel like you'd probably be pretty lost you know jumping in at season six or whatever you'd probably have no idea what's going on i know i certainly would have been lost as hell <laughs> that's for sure 
All right, single race. Can we pick like a normal car here? Uh, no. <laughs> so everything is locked besides the Noble M12 GTO. And I'm assuming that one's unlocked because that's the car we would have got if we would have went with the other guy uh, like we were supposed to instead of ABT racing or whatever. Oh, good. All of the <laughs> tracks just about are locked too. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Uh, what do we got? Springfield? Uh, Silverstone? No, fuck that one. I think we're gonna do Springfield. Just because I like the name. Full Grid, Noble, GT. Evening or day? Wait, we can't set rain or anything like that? Well, fuck, dude. Okay, I guess we're just doing a basic-ass race. We have no other options, so that's kind of what we're stuck with. I need a drink. Noodle, love, I don't know if you can hear me, because you said you were getting a shower. Did you actually get in the shower yet? <laughs> if not, I would love you forever if you got me a drink. I mean, I'll love you forever either way, but if you have, that's fine too, because we've actually got to take a break here relatively soon. So I suppose I can just, you know, get my drink when we go to break and switch games. Hey guys, I know I'm part of the Noble team. I've, I've jumped ship, but that doesn't mean you gotta ram my ass like that. At least buy me dinner first. I am kind of hungry. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh, I was kind of hoping the car would flip right there. I'm not gonna lie. Why has that never happened with the other car? Does this car just like have a higher center of gravity or something? It got so close to flipping over. That would have been fun. That's something I've never had happen in Gran Turismo. Did anybody else, when I was a kid playing racing games, I would get bored of whatever racing game I was playing. And then I would just turn around randomly in the middle of the race somewhere and start driving backwards. And then whenever I met up with the, the group of everyone else coming the other way, I would just ram straight into them as hard as I could and just try to create the largest pileups of, of vehicles possible. Anybody else do that? Or was I the only dickhead that was purposefully causing chaos and I don't know, NASCAR or whatever game I was playing? You'll only love me forever if I get you a drink. I specifically said. <laughs> I'll love you forever either way, you weirdo. Yeah, this car acts really weird whenever you, you brake and then, like, turn. Which, I mean, you're not really supposed to do. You should brake on the straightaway. I get that. But, like, it really wants to just kind of jerk in and, and tip. Lap. Which, I mean, I kind of get. That, that makes some level of sense. When you're going 100 miles per hour and you slam on the brake and then suddenly cut the steering wheel, it's probably not going to end too well in real life either. To be fair, I think I might kind of like this car better, which makes me even more upset that we clicked on the wrong person in the beginning. I don't know what about it exactly, though. Maybe just the design, the look. The color yellow, I don't know. Yellow's not even like one of my favorite colors, but it's more striking, more more visually appealing on a car, I think. Let's you let's you see all the the curves. <laughs> the sharp edges. I also I don't know if it's this car or what, but it seems to be less affected in the grass than, than the other car did. I think whenever the car popped up, I think it had higher stats. So maybe it just feels different because it has higher stats in general. I doubt they went through the trouble of giving each car its own unique physics. Which is something I'm pretty sure games like Gran Turismo and Forza do. Well... It's not so much that they give each car its own unique physics, as just they have a, a strong physics model. 
so that like the the weight and weight distribution of the car actually matter as well as things like braking force and suspension and all that bs whereas i'd, I'd be surprised if they went through the trouble of making all of that a thing in this game but all right anyways guys i think that's all i got for uh, total immersion racing so we're going to go ahead and cut the break screen, and then when we come back, or probably before the ad's even done, honestly, we are going to pick the next game we play because I need to change it up. I'm going to fall asleep playing this. We'll BRB. Ah, uh, that's, a, that's a good one, man. That's a good one. But nope. Not, not that.